Hey guys, Greg here. Let's solve Roman to integer, lead code number 13. So Roman numerals are represented by seven different symbols. We have I, which is one, V, which is five, X, which is 10, and you can see all the numbers in this table here. So for example, two is written as II in Roman numerals, just two ones added together. 12, however, is XII, which is X, which is 10, plus two I's, and so that's 12. Now, the idea here is that Roman numerals are usually written largest to smallest. So see here like XXVII, they're generally getting largest to smallest from left to right. However, the numeral for four is not III. Instead, the number four is actually written as IV. So the smaller thing is coming before the bigger thing. So because the one is before the five, we actually subtract it making four. So instead of I plus V to get six, it's actually V minus I, which is five minus one, which is equal to four. There's actually six instances where the subtraction is used. And so basically just given a Roman numeral, we need to convert it to an integer. Okay, so S is the string of III, the answer is three. If S is 50 plus five, which is 55 plus three, you're gonna get 58. And if it's this crazy one, you're getting a thousand from the M and then you actually have a CM and C is smaller than M. So it's actually plus a thousand minus this hundred here. So a thousand plus 900, we have 1900, we have X and then C. And so that's actually going to be an additional 90 because it's 100 minus 10. So we have 1990. And then we actually add a four. So 1994 is going to be that final answer there. Okay, so let's use this example right here. Now just as a convenience factor, you'd want one way of looking up via a letter to know what its corresponding value is. And so you could use like a hash map for that. So say M is going to take on the value of a thousand, you'd have C is going to take on the value of a hundred, you know, so on. I is going to have the value of one. You would want some sort of a hash map or way of looking up a letter's value. Okay, then from that, basically we are going to use one index I and we are going to have a variable which we'll just call sum, which is what we have so far. We're going to build it up left to right. So we'll initialize that as zero so far. Okay, so let's trace through the string here. Well, do we want to add this or do we want to do any subtraction? Well, you want to add it as long as this value here is actually bigger than the one on the right. And it is, M is 1000, C is 100. And so we are going to just add the value of M. And so, so far we have 1000. Okay, we only used M. And so we move the index only over one space. Well, if we compare C to M, we'd actually see that M is greater than C. So the value on the right is bigger than the one on the left. That means you want to add a subtraction. You get the value of M, which is 1000, and you'd get the value of C and subtract that. So you'd actually want to add this value, you'd want to add 900. So we add a 900. So now we're at 1900. And now in this case here, you need to move your index over two positions, because you've actually used this whole piece right here. So when you do the subtraction part, you actually want to move it over two positions. Now the same thing happens here, we actually know that C has a value of 100, which is bigger than x, which is 10. And so you're going to add the difference. So you would add 100 minus 10, which is 90. So you're going to get an additional 90, 1990 so far. And again, in this case, we did our subtraction piece, we used both the x and the c together, you want to move your index over two positions. Here, it happens one more time at the end, five is bigger than one, so you want to add four, you're going to get 1994. And you're going to move your index over two positions, and you would be done and return your answer. Now before we do that, let's just look at a potential edge case here, which is if we had in I here, well, then what would actually happen is over here, you would have added one, you'd move your index over here. And you want to make sure you don't look out of bounds here. Because if you did look out of bounds, well, then that's going to cause an error. So you only want to look ahead if that's actually possible. And so this last position here, which is always going to be n minus one, so the length of your string minus one will be your last index, you only really want to be able to look ahead if I is less than n minus one, because if I is actually equal to n minus one, that would look out of bounds. So just watch out for that edge case. And other than that, it's not too bad. Okay, so the first thing we'll do is just get our different values in the hash map. So I'm just going to paste that in because it's kind of annoying to type here. But we have that i is 1, v is 5, x is 10, l is 50, c is 100, d is 500, and m is 1000. Well, our current sum is equal to 0. And we'll get n, which is the length of our string, then we'll get our index i, which is equal to 0 to start a while loop. So we want to do this while i is 
less than n. So we might want to do that subtraction piece, except you need to make sure that you can actually look ahead in the array. So that edge case we just discussed there, you can only check ahead if i is actually less than n minus 1. Okay, if that's true. And the dictionary value, so d at s at i, if that is less than d at s at i plus 1. So you can think of d as just the value of this piece here. So if the value of the left character is less than the value of the right character, then okay, we want to actually add the difference to them. So we want sum to go up by the value of s at i plus 1. So the right character minus the value on the left character. And in that case, you actually used two different positions. So I must go up by two. Okay, otherwise, we must be in the case where you just want to do addition. And so your sum is going to go up by your value, which is d at s at i, and you only used one character. So i is going to go up by one. At the end of this, you can simply just return your sum. And this is going to work in a time complexity of big O of n. And we're not storing anything at all here. And so the space complexity is going to be big O of one. If you run that, that is going to work. And I hope this was helpful, guys. Drop a like if it was and have a great day. Bye bye.